Hi. One thing that I have not done for some time is read my Walk in the Light series restoration. I am on chapter three. The book is written by Todd Bennett. I will continue to say that I stammer, stutter. I do not pronounce words correctly. Um, I struggle with the Hebrew. So I'm doing the best I can. This is I do this more for me than anything. And if anybody watches and wants to comment, awesome. I don't claim to know it all. Just trying to get back into the scriptures. So, with that being said, the scriptures record that Yahweh judged the world by a great flood that covered the entire planet. Bereshit 7. The flood was a cleansing, and all of creation was ritualistically purified through this process so that they could start afresh. Only this judgment altered the paradise which, one, which once existed. Which I find interesting because I was sitting there thinking about that when I read this, because when you talk about the Garden of Eden, when the flood covered all of the earth, I mean, that would just go without saying that that had to destroy it or alter it, or I wonder exactly what what happened. I never really thought about that before. The planet had changed, and it did not take long after the flood for manca mankind to once again fall away from Yahweh. A significant occurrence in that process can be seen in what is commonly referred to as the Tower of Babel. There is much that we can learn from the incident at Babel, which gives insight to many of the problems that we see today in the world. We read a very brief but telling portion of history in the scriptures when it describes Babylon. Then they quote Bereshit 11, 1 through 4, which says, And all the earth had one language and one speech. And it came to be, as they set out from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said to each other, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly and they had brick for stone and they had asphalt for mortar and they said come let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens and make a name for ourselves lest we be scattered over all the face of the earth then Yahweh came down to see the city and this tower which the sons of men had built. And Yahweh said, Look, they are one people and they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. And now they are not going to be withheld from doing whatever they plan to do. Verse 7. Come, let us go there and confuse their language so that they do not understand one another's speech. And then I put a note. Us, Yahweh had Yahshua with him in the beginning. And the son. So it was the father and the son in the beginning. They were, are, not one in the same. Also the spirit is the spirit of the father. Some people talk about the Trinity, which I won't go into right now, but the Trinity isn't, I mean, it isn't even spoken of in Scripture. The Father always was there, and the Son was with him from the very beginning, and he sent him down at the time to be crucified for our sons, because the Son has been spoken of in the New Testament, I mean the Old Testament, where there are accounts that he actually walked the earth in the Old Testament. That's a whole other subject. 
Anyway, verse 8, And Yahweh scattered them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. That is why its name was called Babel, because there Yahweh confused the language of all the earth, and from there Yahweh scattered them over the face of all the earth. The inhabitants of the earth had established their own economic, social, political, and religious system. They were going to build a city for themselves and to make a name for themselves. Contrast this city with Jerusalem, which was to be a city where Yahweh would place his name and dwell his people. Babylon was in direct contrast with the desire of the Creator for his creation. Mankind had become haughty and arrogant. They gloried in their own intelligence and ability rather than giving the honor and esteem to Yahweh. We see that much of modern civilization. We see that much of modern civilization shares the same haughty attitude as mankind once had in Babylon as they built a tower to the heavens. Bear sheet 11. 1 through 9, which I just read. Today we share more with Babylon than mere attitude or archaeological ambition. In fact, what many fail to recognize is that it was the false religious system established by men that was at the heart of the Babel incident. While many popular paintings show a round tower reaching to the heavens, the tower was more likely an ancient ziggurat, which served as the centerpiece to the sun god worship established through Nimrod and his mother Semiramis. It was at Babylon that we see Nimrod being worshipped as a god. It was at Babylon that we see Nimrod being worshipped as a god. Legend has it that Shem, the righteous son of Noah, killed Nimrod for his abomination and scattered his body throughout the earth. Despite his death, a religious system developed wherein Nimrod became deified and an entire Trinitarian religious system developed which directed worship away from Yahweh towards a false system to worship which is commonly called the sun god worship. History reveals a very ancient struggle between the worship of the creator of the universe and that of the sun or other related deities, which dates back to Babylonian when Nimrod built the Tower of Babel. As we shall see, most of the religious systems in existence today derive some of their practices from Babylon and Babylon represents the attempt of mankind to establish a system of worship which is not condoned by Elohim. It was a religious and political system that challenged the authority and government of Elohim. I have some notes on here about Genesis 10, 8 through 10, chapter 10, 8 through 10. And Cush brought forth Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one on the earth. He was a mighty hunter before Yahweh. Therefore, it is said, like Nimrod, the mighty hunter before Yahweh. And the beginning of his reign was Babel and Eric. It's E-R-E-K. And I'll have to look these up. I'm sorry. Akkad and K 
Kelned in the land of Shinar. Now I have a note here that verse 8 meaning a cruel oppressor and tyrant. And then 9 his, ty his tyranny came into a proverb as hated both of Yahweh and man for he passed not to commit cruelty even in God's presence. And then 10, for there was another city in Egypt called also Babel. I'm going to do one more um, paragraph and then I'll stop. The scriptures tell us that Noah's son Ham had a son named Cush who married a woman named Samarius. Cush and Samarius then had a son and named him Nimrod. They further report that Nimrod began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before Yahweh, wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before Yahweh. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, and Erich and Akkad and Kel Kelnei in the land of Shinar. Bereshit 10, 8 through 10. And I just read that, so I repeated myself, and I apologize. Most of the people do not quite understand the meaning of this passage and believe that maybe Nimrod was simply good with the bow and arrow. There are many different legends concerning Nimrod. Some claim that mighty hunter should actually be interpreted as giant hunter because he slew giants and conquered lands. Others claim that his great success in hunting was due to the fact that he wore the coats of skins which Elohim made for Adam and Hawa. These coats were handed down from father to son and thus came into the possession of Noah who took them when took them with him into the ark whence they were stolen by him. The latter gave them to his son Cush, who in turn gave them to Nimrod, and when the animals saw the latter clad in them, they crouched before him so that he had no difficulty in catching them. The people, however, thought that these feats were due to his extraordinary strength, so they made him their king. And I am going to stop there. I don't really have a lot to say about this at the moment. As I read on, I will. Here's another tidbit. This is just a tidbit off the beaten path, because it is in chapter 5 that a lot of people say that we were made in the image of Yahweh, the Father, and that is not true. Adam was made in the in the Adam was made in the image of Yahweh. Man was made in the image of Adam because after he sinned and he had children, we were made in his image. So therefore we were not made in in Yahweh's image. That's a misconception. Oh, it was in chapter 6 that it talked about the Nephilims were on the earth in those days and also afterwards when the son of Elohim came in to the daughters of the men and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, the men of name. In chapter 6, it talks about the giants existing in that when they saw that the women were pleasing to their sight, they came in and they had children with them. So the seed has been 
I don't want to say the word corrupted, but the seed has been. And the other thing that I thought was kind of interesting, too, was the fact that when the flood took place, there was a note about, um, I mean, and if you think about it, the things that swam in the water most likely didn't die because they were already part of, they lived in the water. So I'm kind of, it's kind of interesting when he had the flood and said that he, he was going to kill all mankind and he didn't plan on killing all the creatures. I mean, after all, Noah took them onto the ark. But it does make me wonder about the insects and all the different things. I mean, there's a lot of questions. And I'm like a kid when it comes to that. Because it's like, I'll read something and I'll sit there and go, but what about this? And what about that? And I know that we're never going to know all the answers until the day, until the day he comes back. And then I'm sure all our questions will be answered and, and everything will be, you know, made clearer to us as to why and what and all of that for now it's just like it's way too huge to wrap our little brains around <laughs> so with that i'm gonna quit i have to do some major editing on here and uh i will talk to you guys later i just wanted to do a little reading get caught up and you all have a good night take care bye